In this video, we're going to take a look at creating subsurface scattering effects using the medium node in Octane for Cinema 4D. And for this scene, I'm using the Space Pilot 02.c4d scene. So this already has a subsurface scattering shader set up. So I'm just going to walk you through the setup. It's pretty straightforward. And it's based on using a mix material that is mixing a glossy shader and a specular shader. And most of the subsurface is going on in the specular shader. A couple things I want to point out before we get too far into this. Uh, make sure that you're using either path tracing or PMC. For this scene, path tracing works just fine since we don't have a whole lot of caustics going on in here. Um, it is, you're going to get different results if you choose uh, uh, direct lighting. It's going to look not quite as satisfying, even though it comes through somewhat, not exactly physically accurate. So not quite as nice as path tracing. Another thing I've done in this scene is I've created a subsurface scattering uh, render pass so that I can just look at what the subsurface scattering looks like without all the other lighting. And to do this, you can go into render, uh, edit render settings, set this to octane render, and then in the render passes, you can turn on SSS, make sure it's enabled, and then you can check it out while you're working on it in the live viewer. Okay, so for the glossy material, it's pretty straightforward. We have the same textures that I've been using in other videos. It has this character, so color, texture, roughness, normal map, uh, all pretty straightforward set to a glossy material. And this is plugged into material two of a skin mix material. Well, it's a mix material, which I've called pilot skin. And then in the other slot, we have the specular material. If I go to the mix material, I'm just using a simple amount slider to blend these two together. If you really wanted to get fancy, you could create like a thickness texture. If you're texturing in a program like a substance, it allows you to bake out a thickness texture. And then you could use that to control the amount. But I'm just using a little blend slider. So if I go all the way to one side, we can see this is what the glossy material looks like. If I go all the way to the other side, we can see this is what the specular material looks like. So the specular material, uh, so I said this is specular. Uh, roughness I have set at zero. Reflection I also have at zero. You could put the reflection up a little bit to add some specular highlights. The only thing is, is that you know reflection defeats the purpose of subsurface scattering because you're trying to get the rays of light to go into the surface, bounce around, and then come out again. If you start to turn up reflection, of course, that means that you're making the rays of light bounce off the surface. So not as many are going to get into the surface to create this kind of nice translucency. So you probably want to set the reflection to a very low, if not zero value, depending on the effect you're trying to get. Uh, I don't have any anisotropy. I could plug in the same normal map I'm using for my glossy material. You can give, try, give that a try just to see how it looks. It breaks up the surface just a little bit. Um, and then for index, I have this set to 1.33, which is kind of a common index. That's the index of refraction of water. In transmission, I have this set all the way to 1, so it's white. So it's completely... Uh, transparent. So all of the subsurface effect that you're seeing is coming through thanks to the scattering medium. If I unplug the scattering medium, we get this, which looks like transparent surface. Not what we want. So plug the scattering medium back into medium. And when you're working with the octane material, actually let's unplug that for a second. If I go to medium, you have two choices, absorption and scattering. The scattering medium has absorption attributes as well. So uh, you want to use this for subsurface scattering for things like skin. So let's plug this in and then take a look at the settings. The most important setting to work with uh, on the outset is the density. And this is going to change depending on your scene scale. So I had to set this pretty high before I started to see any subsurface scattering. If I bring this down low, we see kind of a transparent surface. But if you're working with a smaller scene size or a much larger scene size, you might get different results. 
So the first thing I usually do when working with this effect is I just start working with the density. Because uh, as you can imagine, this basically uh, controls the density of the material, which means you know how much is the light going to bounce through or how, how far is the light going to penetrate before it comes out. Um, so I found a setting for what I liked for this scene was like around 1200. So it's a bit more subtle. Volume step length is kind of like a quality control. The lower this is, the higher the quality, but the longer it's going to take to render. So you get more accurate results as you lower volume step length. I'm going to, just to speed things up, leave it at 16. Absorption can be a value, a texture, or a color. I'm using this kind of orange color and RGB spectrum node to create comes out as sort of pinkish. The invert absorption, if this is off, then I'm going to get the complementary color to this, whatever this color is. And that's the physically accurate way to do it. Because as you can imagine, if this color is being absorbed by the material, then what we're seeing reflected back in the environment is the opposite of this material. Because it's being absorbed. So by turning on invert absorption, that's just a handy way to make it a little bit more intuitive so that I can see the color that I want coming through. So it's just a very helpful tool. And then scattering, of course, is the next most important setting because uh, this controls the amount of scattering. I've connected a float texture to this. You can use a color or a texture map. Float texture is the easiest to work with. As I lower this, we get less and less scattering and more and more absorption. So the surface is absorbing a lot of the light and not scattering it around. So as I bring it up, I get more and more scattering. And then the phase controls whether the, the scattering is sort of a back scattering effect or a forward scattering effect. If I put this to a negative value, we get more of a back scattering kind of effect. So it's more obvious if we have a very strong light behind the scene. Right now I have an area light, which you can see right here, kind of reflecting off the surface, and then also the environment light. Um, for this particular scene, the phase looks better when it's brought to a positive value, which creates more of a forward scattering effect, as you can see right here. In fact, for this particular character, I found some kind of a mid value, close to the middle, actually works the best, but something you can play with depending on the effect that you're looking for, but it's gonna have a huge uh, impact on the overall look of the scattering. And then you can actually add an emissive texture to make the surface emit light. For skin, that's usually not a great idea. If you're trying to do a very realistic human skin, then your shader network is probably going to be more complex than this and involve more texture maps. Uh, but this gives you an idea of the basic setting. And uh, this works well for kind of sort of, you know, cartoonish characters like this guy who has a very simple, simplistic, who has a very simplistic type of shading look. Uh, let's go back to the skin texture and bring down the amount so we can get some of that glossy color in there. And then you can see the result, especially in the thin parts like his little antennae and around the eyelids. And down here in the neck, you really can see some of that subsurface scattering come through. 